This week's tip focuses on three skills that new Macintosh users will need to know in order to feel comfortable with their new Apple computers. First off, when you arrive at the Macintosh desktop, you're going to notice this large icon in the upper right hand corner. What that is, if you've never seen one before, is what a hard drive looks like, and thus the designation Macintosh HD, which stands for hard drive. In a Windows world, that's kind of analogous to the My Computer and Start menu sort of rolled up into one. If I double click the Macintosh hard drive, you will see that I have different devices on the left hand side, including if I'm on a network or disks that are attached to my Mac, etc. But the thing you want to look for is your username. In this case, this is my daughter's MacBook. If I click on her name, then I get the folders where you can store the data that you start accumulating on your Mac. Your documents you create, pictures that you download from your camera, movies, music, etc. So when you click the Macintosh hard drive, look for your username. Your username will contain all the documents that you start creating. If you click the Macintosh hard drive icon, you will then see the hierarchy of how Macintosh organizes its files. The users, if I click that, will come back and show me there's my current user, Bree. If there's more than one user on a Mac, you will see that in the Mac user folder. If I hit the back button over here on the left, it gets me back to the main folders. On the main screen of the Mac hard drive folders, you probably do not want to mess around in the library or the system folders. Those two folders are for programs and for the Mac system in general. I would recommend staying away from them. Instead, we're going to look here in the Applications folder, which contains icons for all of the programs that are installed on your computer. We're going to come back to this folder in a few minutes when we start talking about the dock. The dock is this row of icons that you see at the bottom of your screen. There is a preset number of icons that are put there by Apple. You do not have to keep all of those icons there if you do not use them. For example, let's say you don't use the GarageBand program, you're not a musical person, as I am not, and you don't need to have that poking you in the eye every day on your dock. I can click the GarageBand icon, drag it to the trash, and then it removes it from the dock. That does not remove the program from the computer, it just removes it from the dock. I can rearrange things by just dragging them into a new place. You'll see that the icons move out of the way as I move across the dock. If I want to add an icon to the dock, I can go back to our Macintosh hard drive we showed you a moment ago, go to my Applications folder, and find an icon that you do want. So let's say, for example, Firefox, and we can drag it to the dock. Simple as that, and now I have an icon for Firefox. So to delete an icon, click and drag it to the trash can. If you want to add an icon to the dock, drag it down to the dock from the Applications folder. A couple quick little customization things for the dock. If you click the Apple in the upper left hand corner and go to System Preferences, or if you still have the System Preferences icon here on the dock, you could click that. You then click the dock, and in the dock area you can choose to minimize the amount of magnification that happens. Notice that now my icons are not magnifying when I hover on them or if I have that up towards the top, you can see that they grow as I hover on the different icons. You can position the dock left, right, or bottom. The bottom is the default. You can choose not to animate the opening of applications, and that means they bounce when you uh, open them. Two other areas you might want to be aware of in the dock control area here is how big the icons are. You can make them really tiny, or you can make them very large depending on what suits you the best. If you do not want to see the dock all the time, you can click this button here in the dock control panel, and it'll hide the dock. Then when I move the mouse to the bottom of the screen, the dock will pop up. When I move the mouse away from the bottom of the screen, then the dock disappears. Lastly, I want to show you a little bit about Macintosh Windows. No, not Microsoft Windows, Macintosh Windows. Anytime you open a screen, it's called a window. This is con considered a window. In Mac environment, the only way to resize a Macintosh window manually is to go to the lower right-hand corner. 
you can't go to any of the corners or any of the edges of a Mac window. You have to go to the lower right hand corner in order to make a window smaller or larger. So that's right here in this lower right hand corner. Click and drag to resize a window. Now the buttons that you're used to if you're a Windows user for maximizing or closing a window used to be on the right hand side. If you're a Windows user, you're used to finding the maximize and minimize and close window buttons on the right hand side of a window. In a Mac environment, it's on the left. The X is still close the window. The orange button here with the little bar is the minimize. If I click that, it minimizes it down to my dock. I can click back on it to bring it back. And the green button is the maximize button. Or it is a toggle between the maximum size that you have set for that window or the next size underneath it. So if I make this window larger and then I hit the green button, it'll go to the previous size. If I hit it again, it goes to the size that I had resized it. So it's a little different than the maximize button that you're used to in Windows. Use these tips to help you get yourself acquainted with your Mac and you'll find that your Mac is an indispensable tool and you'll never regret buying the Macintosh computer. <laughs>